her, her, uh, Good afternoon. Welcome to the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County, December 8th, 2022 meeting. As we prepare to open the meeting, here are some of the guidelines. Meetings are now open to the public. This public hearing is being televised live on St. Mary's County Government TV 95 and the county's YouTube channel. It will remain available on demand viewing on the St. Mary's County Governmental YouTube channel. My name is David Willenborg, I'm the chairman. To my right is Mr. Watts, I mean, pardon me, Mr. Chin, Close. Tammy Hildenbrand, and our attorney, Chris Beaver. To my left is Member Cole and Member Hill, and our Vice Chairman Richard Watts will be here in a few minutes. In the audience, we have uh, a recording secretary, Susie Dean, Kevin Hall, our inspector, and Deputy, uh, and Steve Myers, our alcohol enforcement coordinator. First thing is to approve the agenda for today. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? I make a motion we approve the agenda. Okay, we have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second that. First, second, any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, thank you. Does everybody have an opportunity to review the minutes from uh, November 8th, I mean November 10th? Yes. We have a motion to approve the minutes from November 10th as written. I make a motion we approve the minutes of November 10th as written. We have a motion to approve, do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, Mr. Chin seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, thank you. New business, applications. The Brass Tap Craft Beer and Bar, a beer bar and kitchen. Application of Josephine, um, is it Snavely? Michael Snavely and Candace Snavely to purchase a class D beer wine liquor license and trade as Brass Tap Craft Beer, Bar and Kitchen, MD Enterprise LLC, AKA TJ Enterprise LLC, 44940 St. Andrews Church Road, um, suite A through C, California, Maryland, 20619, and permission for outdoor seating and refillable, um, non-refillable permit. Please come forward and be sworn in. I'll raise your right hand. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please come forward, state your name, and give us your home address for the record. Candace Snavely, home address is 44533 Clarks Mill Road, Hollywood, Maryland, 20636. Josephine Snavely, address 10055. Ferton Lake Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89178. Uh, Michael T. Snavely, uh, 10055, Ferton Lake Avenue, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89178. Please sit down. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I can, uh, we've had one change to our design since we put in our application. If I may present this yes, to you. Yes, please. Please do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So go ahead and please pr present your application. Yes, sir. <coughs> So as you uh, stated, Mr. Chairman, we're uh, here today seeking approval of our Class D uh, liquor license to operate as a brass tap craft beer bar and kitchen. Uh, we are a, uh, a franchise organization uh, with 42 locations in 14 states. The corporate office is out of Tampa, uh, Florida. Uh, the, the concept 
of the brass tap is um, it's just not a, a beer bar, right? We, we are a craft beer, spirits, and wine, right? Um, but the concept is for anyone wanting to enjoy a, a craft drink uh, or just a, a family coming in wanting to get something to eat, they're welcome. So uh, we're, we're definitely not a, a come in and drink uh, Two dollar bottles of beer all day. That's that's not our concept. Okay, our concept is more to the enjoyment and to the family. Uh, so today we are requesting indoor and outdoor seating, of which the outdoor seating would be environmentally controlled in the summer and in the fall and winter. Um, and with with the, I'll give you the the, the the other concept of for the craft beer bar, we will have 45 taps uh, in the bar itself, and that's a combination of all craft beer and then you know certain ciders okay uh, we also have about a hundred different bottles and cans of craft beer available we'll carry the the you know the commercial bud bud light things like that in a bottle only but everything on taps craft we're also going to have a, a full uh, not a full menu but we're going to have a pub menu because we're a pub based social bar uh, so we'll have you know flatbed for breads and pretzels and wings and um, uh, burgers uh, we'll do salads and lumpia and things like that. So we're going to mix up the menu. We'll have specialty uh, foods during specialty events, you know, St. Patty's Day and things like that. So we'll have different uh, events. Uh, but within the facility itself, we're also going to have uh, different, uh, you know, uh, events, whether it's a trivia night or a game night or a theme night or things like that. But again, it's all towards the enjoyment, right? Just not to come in, you know, for, uh, you know, just to simply have a beer. Um, our Class D license is based on that we sell more alcohol than we do food, okay? At an average, we're a 54-46 split, alcohol being 54%. And but the reason I say that to you is we're not 54% by volume sold, it's price point, okay? So it's really the cost of our sales, not the amount of, of beer or, or liquor that we sell. And I thought that was important that I, that I brought that up to the board to, because it falls within, you know, what the concept of, you know, our brass tap is. Um, the facility itself, we're looking to hold 80 people indoors, uh, 34 outside. Um, and that will include, you know, the ADA seating that we'll have set aside. Uh, again, the outside will be uh, environmentally controlled either by fans and, and misters in the summer or in the, in the fall we'll have infrared heaters and then we'll do soft sides so that we can use the outside area year, year round, you know, for maximized seating. The updated drawing I gave you um, shows one change. When we first uh, submitted our package, we were going to do 60 taps in the facility. But as we did our initial drawing, the first thing that we noticed was we had no secondary egress out of our kitchen. So in order to make the secondary egress, we, we shortened the beer cooler up to 45 taps. And now that gives us, if you look at your drawing, um, on the uh, left side of the keg cooler, uh, you'll see where we have a, another egress. That's what we developed. So we had the one on the right side going to the kitchen. We shortened our cooler up to give you one on the left side as well. That's just so you're on both sides. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then your entrances. So the facility, we have the main entrance in and out. But within our concept, on the left side of the building, uh, you'll see where the uh, outdoor seating area is. Well, there's also a uh, roll-up garage door in that same area to give us access outside. Um, and up front, we're gonna have opened windows. They're, they're called- um, Window awning. Window awnings, thank you. That actually lift up, but there's no uh, exit at that window. The wind, it's a, it's a half wall, the window comes up, you can let the air in if you want, but you can't leave the facility. The one way in and out of that facility is in the front. The outdoor area will also have a railing all the way around it, which we will have a gate there, you know, for emergency exiting, you know, so people don't have to jump up or come back through. But the main entrance and exit is the front door. Uh, the other doors in the back will all be uh, uh, panic bars with alarms on them as well. Uh, and just to, to give you a reference, so you know, the facility we're talking about is the former Cafe Rio 
in the St. Mary's Marketplace right next to Harris Teeter. That's the facility that we're looking to renovate. So it's a good facility. Um, renovation is not uh, dramatic, right? We have to go in and, and build the, the bar itself out, put the cooler in there, but the back part of the kitchen we can still use, the walk-in refrigerators, all that. So we're limiting how much we really have to structurally do to the building, but that is a facility that we're looking to take over. Okay. So since we're a corporate, uh, since this is a franchise, we also have full corporate support both before and during operation. Before to get in, you know, making sure that, that we're doing the, the construction correctly. The responsibility of all the licenses, hiring of the GCs, managing the day-to-day -day activities, all that is on the three of us, all right? But corporate themselves play a big part before and during to make sure that we still do it right. And they do monitor us to make sure we are. So they just don't give you a, corp a franchise license and let you go out and say you're gonna do great things. They, they control, they track you, okay? Um, but with, with us opening, so that means we will also do our own hiring, um, staffing, things like that. Uh, in addition to the training that the three of us will take, you know, both the RAS training and the TAMS or TIPS training, um, we also have a formal training uh, program for our employees, all of our servers, our bartenders, uh, on the uh, ID checking, the, the service of alcohol, the, the paying attention during the, you know, the time that they're in the facility, not just checking the ID and handing, handing a drink to somebody, but paying attention. Make sure we don't overserve, right? We're watching our patrons, our guests, because it's still supposed to be enjoyable. And then as we go through the, through the night, you know, make sure we pay attention to who we serve and that those individuals are the only ones that are consuming the alcoholic beverage, you know, not buying it and passing it. So it's gonna be more than just Hey, check your ID, make sure they're of age. You know, we have a plan to train our personnel all the way through so that we're constantly monitoring what we do within the building, within our own business. So, um, trying to think what else I was gonna tell you. I think I may have hit all my points, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Questions? Yeah, <clears throat> yes, you're um, in the uh, proposed um, covered patio area yes, outside. Sir. That is a um, exit only door that you have? It will, <clears throat> so you can, uh, it swing, no, let me, I'm trying to figure out how to tell you. In order to get out of it, you can't push it out to go out to the parking lot. You have to pull it in. It's not locked. Right, because um, you're talking about the gate. You're talking about the gate. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not a lock gate, but you have to pull it towards you to get out of it. You can't just push it out and walk out into the parking lot. Yes. Okay. So the drawing drawing here is incorrect. It's showing. It should show you coming in. Coming in. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, but that is going to be. Exit only, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, that's correct. And it will be. We will have a sign on that uh, on that gate that says just that. You know, use main entrance, exit only. You know, it'll be it'll be uh, annotated on it. Um, how many different craft beers did you say you had in this facility? There'll be forty-five, sir. 45? Well, forty-five on tap, and on then tap, yeah. on tap, and then about a hundred in cans and bottles. But 45 on tap? Yes, sir. How, uh, how do you control your, uh, your spoilage? So the first is, you know, you're buying bullet kegs, not full kegs. Right. right. And then, you know, comes in, you'll, you'll look at the date of manufacturer, date of date we had the keg, and then we'll time it out. Um, and then once it reaches the, the time limit, then we have to either take, send it back, replace it with a new one. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was concerned about the uh, the spoilage with that many. Uh, yes, sir. That many draft beers. You also have to pay attention to what's not selling, so you don't keep bringing it in as well. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, are you all uh, you all all three need RAST training? Is that correct? 
We're all three going to take grass training, yes, sir. You all three are going to take it, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Tammy, what do we have here as far as conditional? It's a complete conditional because they're doing a renovation. So yeah. I'm assuming they have no approvals. So I believe what they're asking for today is a 90-day conditional approval. It is. So okay, okay. So we're going to need uh, traders, traders, occup occupancy, health department, and fire marshal approvals. Yeah. So you all have not begun renovating? No, sir. On this? No, sir. So one of the uh, one of the terms with the lease is to ensure that we could get the conditional approval, and then we'll sign the lease. We've already uh, uh, contracted with our GC, so mm -hmm. that's taken care of. Uh, we're just waiting for this. We'll go back, uh, prove to the landlord that we have our conditional, finish the uh, negotiation, sign the lease, and then we can begin our renovation. Wasn't this this location it was a Mexican restaurant? Yes, sir, it was. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Um, how long how long are you anticipating on the renovations themselves? You're going to keep the same kitchen? Correct. We're going to actually cut that kitchen in half because the if you look at it, it's there's two parts. There was a prep uh, part in the back, and there was a service part up front. So the service part would go away. That's mm -hmm. actually where we're going to fit the 45 keg cooler mm -hmm. right there. The back part we keep. Some of the current um, uh, appliances, thank you. Yep, we can reuse. So we'll, we will where we can, and then we'll bring new ones in. But the back half is what's going to be renovated. That's where we're going to put the four uh, industrial freezers. We'll keep the grill. We have to bring in our own uh, fryers. The fryers that we won't use, we'll have to bring in our own fryers, flatbread ovens. It's indicated in the will you have to? Will you have to re reconfigure the Ansel system? Or, uh, or can you use the existing Ansel? We can use the existing. Um, as far as what we have to move, I don't know that yet until the GC gets in there and starts taking things out. Until the fire marshal tells you Roger what, what you're going to have to do or whatever. Correct. You're, you're now asking for a conditional uh, approval on this. Yes, sir. What, what realistically do you foresee as far as the renovation? Realistically, I think I'm going to be back in front of you for another extension, uh, only because I'm looking at the time frame for certain, some, since we started the package till now, now I'm looking at the timeline it takes now to get some of the equipment I need, and everything has shifted to the right. So that's realistically that I think I'm Are you back. anticipating six months? Uh, Nine are, months? No, what? we're looking at six. We're looking at coming in uh, at six months open door. Yes. Okay, but coming back to us for an extension to whatever we approve today, correct? Yes, sir. Absolutely. <clears throat> so, anyway. Yeah. No, that's, that's okay, I'm good. good. I'm good. So, you have other businesses yourselves that you're operating in other states, other franchises, or is no, this sir. only one? This is this is the only one. The so we're not owners of the of the corporation, mm -hmm. right? We're just a franchisee. So this is the first one we're putting in. We have uh, bought into the franchise for five uh, units, um, but this is the first one we're putting in. Okay. So. Why are you going to be, a, um, how are you going to be a good custodian for this liquor license? You know, you've, you haven't been in the liquor business before, right? Or, or so, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, just, it's a serious thing to protect the public, the children. Absolutely. Yep. So historically for businesses, we have owned a catering business. We have owned a furniture business. So business side we have owned. Um, as far as the liquor goes, my, my last uh, experience was I was a, a bartender, I wasn't a manager at the local Outback restaurant. Uh, I did hold my TAM certification before, uh, I don't hold it now. Uh, but I have gone through the training, I do understand the uh, importance of controlling alcohol, the importance of not serving minors, and I also understand we, I should say understand, the consequences if you break that rule. You know, not just not just in in coming back before the board and have potential losing your license or being fined, 
But the real consequence is we serve somebody and they go on the street and they hurt somebody else or they hurt themselves. That, that's the ultimate thing we focus on. Okay. Um, so how high is this wall around the, the, the patio area? Is this something that somebody's going to be able to um, jump over or? Yeah, it's <laughs> depends on depends on how, how much you're motivated, right? So uh, the wall. <laughs> yes, I understand, but yeah, right. we don't have any. The, the wall idea. itself, yes, sir. The wall itself uh, is forty inches. I think it's, yeah, it's about 40, forty inches. Okay, yes. forty inches. Mm -hmm. Forty inches. Is it? Is it? And it's really not a wall, uh, so it's not a solid wall. It's um, it's a square tube railing. Um, the best way to describe so it's a metal, it. It's a metal. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. It's metal. It's steel tubing. It's square steel tubing. Okay. Okay. That's all around. Okay. And if uh, the best way for you to, to picture it is, have did you go into the Cafe Rio when it was open? So if you went in and you saw their the steel railing that formed their line to get to you to order. That's still there. We're actually repurposing that steel railing and using it as a railing for the outside area. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your the, the front part of this exterior then is is cover, covered patio, correct? Yes, sir. And then what the 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 back part is uncovered or what or is it all? All so during the <clears throat> during the summertime, it'll have its awning over top the whole patio. Okay. And then when you get to the fall and the winter, we're going to soft side it on the sides and on the back, on the on the rear. Say again. A roll down. Roger. Yep. So you roll the soft sides down. They'll tie up and they'll form a a uh, basically a, a full enclosure. So okay. it holds the the heat, you know, during the winter time. And and what do you have now as far as like the exterior patio area? Um, what kind of security or uh, how, how are your servers going to work in serving your, your clientele in the patio area? Mm -hmm. um, is there going to be somebody that's dedicated? That is correct. To, to that? Right. So uh, the, the, uh, the business itself will be set up in sections. So that patio will be broken into two. So there'll be two, two servers just for the patio. Uh, and then internal, it's also set up so many tables per section, one server dedicated to that section. But you have a mix of clientele. You have a mix of underage and yes, overaged sir. individuals yes, sir. milling throughout the, the entire business. So my concern is the um, verification of ID. Uh, is that's going to be on the, the server themselves to... Correct. The Ser card. Correct. Everyone. The server will will card, uh, and we are we are 100% ID check. I don't know if I said that before. So we are 100% ID check. 100%. Huh? 100. Correct. Now, you may get some some guests that may get irritated with it. I understand that, right? But we are going to be 100%. That way, my servers do not have to wonder, right? Which I hope they never do. But wonder if they should card somebody. You're going to card everybody, to include if I was to walk in there, they're going to card me, okay? Um, but yeah, it's 100% service. But that's also part of our training we were talking about. So 100% ID check, 100% paying attention to your, your sections and, and, you know, personnel with, or guests within the facility, you know, who's there. And at any time, if, if we have a doubt, then we're going to re-verify. Even if my, our servers have carded the first time, if you come back to the table and you, again, you have a doubt, then you're going to cart again. But we're also going to have a general manager on the floor at all times. Um, and then one, one of the three of us will be there as well. So my wife, Josephine, is retired. All right. I currently still work. Uh, our daughter still works. So she will be the main representative during the day. Uh, Candace and myself will be there in the evenings. So... Um You don't think there's going to be any threat cars running into this? I believe this is on the side. It is. Right, so, okay. Right, so. The structure, that's what I was trying to get to. Is this structure going to be strong enough, you think, to be able to slow down a vehicle at all if? If it goes up. So what it has to do, if you look, you can keep going too, right? So 
If you look where the uh, outdoor patio is, in order to get to that patio, you have to jump a curb, uh, and it's a, it's a high curbing. Okay. You gotta come through a yard way and you gotta go through some mailboxes okay. that are all there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's pretty. Okay, it's pretty... I couldn't see it looking at the maps. Yeah, okay. this one here only shows the facility, and I apologize. It doesn't show anything on the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I guess this is my question. You got questions? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I just have one question. So I know you, all three of you are applying for the, uh, become the licensee here. Yes, sir. But both of you have an address in Nevada. So are you planning on moving back here? We or? do. Okay. Right, right. now we're, we're okay. splitting our time. Okay. Um, so when we, uh, when we bought into the franchise, okay. we uh, secured the Tri-County area here. And the reason for that is Josephine moved uh, to the county in 05, oh. 04. Um, I'm, I'm raised here in the county, and so is my daughter. So we wanted to be able to lock in the Tri-County area. Uh, but then we also locked in uh, Clark County, uh, which Las Vegas is part of, because we have family there as well. Um, Las Vegas is a little harder market to, to work with, right? Uh, if we finally open one out there, we have other um, general managers and other family that will manage it, but we're gonna spend our time here. Are you gonna be doing um, carry out as an alcohol. We will have gr uh, crowlers, crowlers which are closed cans. Right. Uh, the brass tap has a, a, a machine. It's like it's just like your glass growler, but it's a crowler. So there's You're not a doing can. mixed drinks to go. Oh no, sir. Okay. Sir, they can't. That was okay. for the COVID. You're thinking of the COVID through. permit that ends in June. Oh, that's right. It does yeah. end. That's right. So unless, unless, unless we like, unless we renew it, yeah. unless they right. unless the sun. Even if yeah. you do, we're not planning on doing mixed drinks out the door. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? No questions. Mm -hmm. Two entrance two and two. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that was uh, 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 Richard. That was your question about the uh, the residency and everything. That was my was going to be a question that I had as to. We're showing everybody in Las Vegas, except yes. for Candace. Correct. In yeah. Hollywood. How that happened was raised here, went to graduated school here, went in the military, came back, uh, and I worked for a contractor. Uh, there was a position in uh, Miami with the military they needed filled, so I took that position from there, went to Vegas, and now we're coming back. It's just, like, we did a long way to come home, basically, <laughs> right? So. You, grad you went to high school here? I graduated Riken, yes sir, I did. Where'd you go, Riken? Riken, yes sir. And then you went in the service, is that I correct? I did, sir. Uh, I'm prior army, my wife's retired Air Force. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. um, Tammy, were and there government. any um, letters for the public in support or opposition? Neither support nor opposition, no sir. Okay. Uh, administrative point of view, do, do you need uh, any of the franchise papers? Is that? I have everything I need. Is that okay, sir. all right. Okay, um, anybody in the audience oppose this application? <clears throat> um, you've already covered the conditions. <clears throat> um, he has those, so we'll go ahead and... Uh... Mr. Cole, you wanna make a motion? I would make a motion that we approve the application as a 90-day uh, conditional approval um, based on traders, occupancy, fire marshal. Health. And health. Okay. For the Brass Tap Craft Beer Bar and Kitchen application for Josephine Snavely, Michael Snavely, and Candace Snavely to purchase a Class D beer, wine, and liquor license and to trade as the Brass Tap Craft Beer Bar and Kitchen, Maryland Enterprise LLC, also known as TJ Enterprise LLC, Four four nine four zero St. Andrews Church Road Suites A through C California Maryland two six one nine 
permission for outdoor seating, and um, refillable, non-refillable growler permit. Okay. The, the uh, yeah, and I had already mentioned what was the conditions. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second that. Do we have any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. All right. Yeah. Thank you. We should have been in about 90 yeah. days. <laughs> <laughs> you come on in. Good luck with uh, the Any renovation. licensee, applicant for a license or group of not less than 10 persons who are residents or real estate owners in the district in which the license place of business is located or proposed to be located may within 30 days from the date of any final decision of the board in approving, suspending, revoking, restricting, or refusing to approve, suspend, revoke, or restrict any license or licensee appeal such decision to the circuit court for St. Mary's County. The appellant shall be required to pay in advance a sum of money reasonably re estimated to cover the expense of transcribing the hearing of the decision being appealed. Move on to violations. Big Dogs Paradise Bar and Liquor. Employee Monica Lynn Adkins. The above individual, Monica Adkins, was an employee of a license holder and sold or provided alcoholic beverages to an individual under the age of 21 in violation of of 6-304 of the alcohol beverage article of the Anacoda Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Please come forward and be sworn in. Mr. Atkins, you can stay. Here. Yes. Right yes. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Great. Can you please state your name and address for the record? Please sit down. So the first thing I have to ask is, did this take place? Yes, it did. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Beaver, would you read in the facts? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The facts underlying this violation are as follows. On September 29th, 2022, at approximately 5.35 p.m., the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a Sheriff's Office Correctional Officer, 20 years of age, into Big Dog's Paradise Bar and Liquor, located at 28765 Three Notch Road in Mechanicsville, Maryland, with no identification. The correctional officer entered the premise and received an alcoholic beverage, specifically a can of White Claw black cherry hard seltzer and placed it on the counter for purchase. The clerk, later identified as Miss Monica Leanne Atkins, <coughs> failed to ask the correctional officer for any identification and completed the sale of the alcoholic beverage. Uh, the officer then exited the uh, premises with the alcoholic beverage. Thereafter, the officer made contact with Corporal Patrick Handy and Deputy Stephen Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit in the parking lot of the licensed premise where the correctional officer provided a description of the sale. Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers entered the establishment and made contact with Ms. Adkins. The officers identified themselves and informed Ms. Adkins that she had served an alcoholic beverage to an underage Sheriff's Office Correctional Officer. Ms. Atkins admitted to not verifying the correctional officer's age prior to selling the alcoholic beverage. Um, Ms. Atkins was informed by the officers that an offense report would be completed and that she and the licensee would appear um, by summons before this board. Uh, photographs were taken of the beverage and um, placed into evidence and all this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you. You're welcome. Board questions? Seconds, can you describe, I guess, in, in your words, uh, you know, what happened, why why you felt that uh, it, it occurred? 
So the gentleman that actually came in that day, um, he honestly looked quite familiar to me as, as in someone that I had just served over the weekend, like three, four days ago. Um, ironically so, that he purchased the same exact beverage of the gentleman that I served over the weekend, who I carded. Um, I was extremely busy in there. I was dealing with um, a sick child as well. So I kind of passed my better judgment. I've been doing this for quite some time and I've kind of gotten scrutiny for IDing everybody, but I went against my better judgment and didn't cart him. Okay. Have you, uh, your employer provided uh, training on, on verify, uh, age verification? Yes. Okay. When was your last training? Um, my TAM certification was just renewed and I'm not sure exactly the date. I don't know the exact date. It was renewed. Um, we actually sent it to Mr. Hill. Okay. So fairly recently. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess d despite that training, you, um, I guess you I thought felt I the need not to, uh, yeah, okay. unfortunately. Um, Okay. Monica, what, what, what time of day was this? Was about, it, it was in the evening, about 5.30. About 5.30 was busy? I mean, yes, extremely was, busy. Yes, the, it was. the bar was busy at the time? Yes, and the bar was busy, the store was busy as well. Um, but like I said, it doesn't coincide with my mistake, so. Were you the only employee uh, serving alcohol at the time? Yes. You said you've been doing this for some time. How many years have you been uh, serving? I have been doing this for about nine years. About nine years, okay. So long, uh, long enough, you, you, you're familiar with the rules and you know the rules. Yes. Okay. Trust me, I've gotten up quite a bit of scrutiny for ID and people. I've sent people home to get their ID to come back. Right. You know, I've had, you know, I've cut people off, asked them for their ID, got kicked out. They didn't want to come back, you right. know. I've had people threaten me, try to fight me, all because of asking for an ID. Yeah. So like I said, I've been doing it for nine years. I've, I've done quite a good job. I mean, I'm pretty methodical with my employees that I tell them, look, this is, you know, IDs, it's gotta go. Right. I'll even pull somebody out in the, middle of the in, middle of the day and ask my employee, did you card that person? You know, yeah, okay, good. Okay. So. so so, I mean, it doesn't necessarily sound like, or, or you tell me, is would this just be complacency? No, I can't say it's complacency. Um, I will say it was, it was against my better judgment. I am very, very, I'm a very stickler about carding. And this particular time, I didn't because, like I said, he looked very familiar to me. Mm -hmm. um, as in, you know, I recognize faces and, and the thing that he got was pretty much the exact same thing the gentleman got over the weekend. Um, so I thought it was him. I didn't card him and I completed the transaction. Cool. Although I did card the gentleman over the weekend. So that's why I thought, okay, it's the same guy. Because not too many people come in and buy, you know, well, not too many guys come in and buy a white call. Um, I mean, I'm not saying this, you know, but that's know. what, it stuck out to me, so, and that's what I recognized. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, uh, I guess, what about this individual seemed familiar that, um, that made you think that it was the, the, the same individual? Um, it, well, first thing, it was the purchase of the beverage. Well, the beverage in, that they chose. Mm. Um, second was the haircut and um, the actual just his demeanor towards me. Almost as in like, hey, how are you? You know, which not too many. I mean, I'm always polite to everybody that comes in anyways, but he, he just, his facial features look very familiar to me. Okay. <coughs> okay. I had no further questions. Okay. Um, are you a part owner? No, I'm not. No, nope. just an employee. Yes. Sir. Okay. Richard, I don't have any questions. What is your relation to uh, to the licensee, uh, Monica? 
That's my husband. That's your husband? Mm -hmm. Brian's your husband? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Barbara? I have no questions. Questions. Okay. We're done? Motion? I'll make a motion. So this is your first time offense? Yes. And I see this as uh, a negligence, if you will. You failed to card even. I know you, I heard an excuse that you thought you recognized person. So the maximum fine is, um, is $500, right? For a car. So I motion uh, fine $150 uh, for the, the negligence, negligence for, the, for this incident. This is a motion. Okay, we have a motion for a $150 fine. Do we have a second? I'll second. We have a first, we have a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. I oppose. The ayes have it. So uh, you can go over and see Susie, right? Yep. You guys have paperwork? Okay. You have 10 days to pay the fine, and you may within 30 days from today appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County, okay? Thank you. Okay. Next item. Brian Atkins, sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 in violation of um, 6-304 of the alcoholic beverage article of the Anacoded Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the rules and regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Please be sworn in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give would be the truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Please, please state your name and address for the record. Um, Brian Atkins, 23949, Hollywood Road, Hollywood, Maryland, 20636. Okay, thank you. Please have a seat. So, do we admit that this did, in fact, happen? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it did happen. I was uh, actually on my way back to the facility uh, when I got a, um, I got a text from a kitchen employee that there were some police officers there. Uh, so I immediately went on to uh, our cameras and, and that's when I seen uh, Sergeant Myers and uh, um, another officer um, in, the, in the store. Um, when I walked in, um, I was notified at that point what had, what had happened because I, I wasn't prior to. So, uh, so yes, uh, it did happen. Okay, thank you. Mr. Beaver, would you please read in the facts? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the, the facts underlying this violation are as follows. On September 29th, uh, 2022, at approximately 5.35 p.m., the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a Sheriff's Office Correctional Officer, 20 years of age, into Big Dog's Paradise Bar and Liquor, located at 28765 Three Notch Road in Mechanicsville, Maryland, with no identification. The correctional officer entered the premises and retrieved an alcoholic beverage, specifically a can of White Claw Black Cherry Hard Seltzer, and placed it on the counter for purchase. The clerk, later identified as Monica Leanne Adkins, failed to ask the correctional officer for any identification and completed the sale of the alcoholic beverage. The correctional officer then exited the premises with the alcoholic beverage. Thereafter, the correctional officer made contact with Corporal Patrick Handy and Deputy Stephen Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit in the parking lot of the licensed premise, where the correctional officer provided a description of the sale. Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers entered the establishment and made contact with Ms. Atkins. The officers identified themselves and informed Ms. Atkins that she had served an alcoholic beverage to an underage sheriff's officer, um, correctional officer. Uh, Ms. Atkins admitted to not verifying the correctional officer's age prior to selling the alcoholic beverage. Uh, Ms. Atkins was informed by the officers that, the off that an offense report would be completed and that she and the licensee would be issued a summons to appear before this board. Photographs were taken of the beverage um, by the officers and the photographs were placed into evidence. All of this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. 
questions? Mr. Atkins, could you describe your training program? <coughs> excuse me. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Yes, yeah, so um, our employees are, um, they're not required to, uh, to, to take TAMs um, prior to hiring, um, but however, we, when I say we, uh, myself and Monica, we asked them to get that taken care of. So recently, because um, we were trying to get um, employees in with RAS training as well, the problem is um, all of our employees, except for uh, myself, Monica, and uh, our kitchen help, well, they do have full-time jobs. Um, so I think the RAS training is, uh, is during the day, most of the time, so as far as that, it, it's hard. Um, but they, so we recently, um, early as this year, made a decision to um, uh, require everyone to go through TAM certification. Um, however, we didn't give them a timeline, um, which I feel like we need to because that's when things tend to fall through the cracks and, and people just say, well, you know, I have time, I have time. But um, I'm trying to, um, prior to coming here, um, so I want to say myself, Monica, and I, I believe I, I thought it was Sarah that had um, TAM certification or TIP certification, um, but um, but that's one of the things that we're we're going to implement is that everybody uh, goes through that training. Uh, but outside of that, um, we have what we call, we we try different things outside of um, just communicating with the employees. Um, we we try different ways, which would using, say for instance, group text, group uh, messenger. Um, sometimes those things just fell through the crack and it just wasn't the right thing to do. So we went through, um, we ended up going through GroupMe, um, which, and then we constantly, you know, we constantly press, press, press about ID, ID, ID. It's the same thing when people come through the bar, um, the bar door, it's 100% ID check there uh, with our security. Matter of fact, I actually, uh, um, parted ways with one because um, he knew quite a few of the people in the county and 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 he was new but I had to part ways because he was going against policy you know because well I know them I know them it's not it's not the point so we had to part ways so um, and of course that's so we constantly and same thing when when this happened with uh, with Monica first thing she did she got right right on on the group me and told everybody let everybody know what happened she, she held accountability um, there was no excuses um, none of that just basically um, this is what we need to do I, I just I, I just basically got busted and this can't happen again whether it's me or anyone else you know it just can't happen um, so I put it in a nutshell that that's pretty much it so if, if I were to come in and get a job at your establishment, um, what what would be my uh, what what would be my criteria for being able to then serve alcohol? Yeah, well, for, first of all, it, it's experience, um, and then um, but we always ask, and, and it's written down on their application if they were TAMs or TIP certified. Um, some of them say that they are. Some of them say no. Um, then I'll go into, are you interested in? Um, getting TAM certified. Some of them say, well, I had it, but it expired. Um, yes, I, I'll be willing to do that. And to be honest with you, um, all the employees that are there now have been there for years. Um, a lot of the new employees, because like I say, we're short staff, um, just like most of the employee, employers out here now, most of the businesses. So, uh, and to be honest with you, with everything going on in the last two or three years, um, with, I'll just say, free money. People were just using, you know, our ads with, um, um, on, on um, we did a Facebook ad and we did Indeed. Uh, they were just, there was people from all walks of life all across the country applying for a bartending job, security job, kitchen staff, liquor store clerk, just to get that on their paper. It, it made no sense. So, but to put it in a nutshell, that, that's, yeah, it's, it's that's, we do that. We, we do ask and, and things of that nature. But again, we haven't hired any new people. Okay. 
So, so I don't necessarily think you answer my question. If, if uh, so, let's say I have not been TAMS certified, um, and I come in. Uh, what what training would you provide me to allow me to serve alcohol, or would you just tell me that I can't serve alcohol? Well, well no. Um, the thing is, we're, we're offered we're offered to pay for the TAMS. We've we've done that in the past, um, and we all went and, and took the class up at JCs and Waldorf. So yeah, so I'll offer, you know, even if it's a renewal, renewals I think ten dollars cheaper. Um, we'll pay for the the, the actual class. Um, matter of fact, I think I delegated to Monica to, to find out where the classes are being held because we used to go right to St. Mary's Landing and and do it there. Um, and then uh, it's basically pretty much closest to us now is, um, as a matter of fact, I think I took a class at Brass Rail at one time. I think now it's uh, JC's is probably the closest in Mordor. But yeah, so that's what I would offer, you know, and, and that's what we do offer is if they don't have it, we offer to pay for it to get it done. Okay. But we, we just haven't had that opportunity to do that because we just don't have new employees coming in. Is that a requirement of your establishment to be able to serve alcohol of your employees? Oh, the TAM certification? Yes. Yes, but we just haven't had any, any new people to. Okay. Is that, how do you, how have you documented that? Well, basically, um, we get a copy. Well, they bring the uh, TAM certification in the card. We make a copy. Uh, no, I'm sorry. How, how have you documented it as an establishment that that is the requirement to serve alcohol? Well, I don't have it here, but it's basically just verbal. Um, do you have any other sign, signage of any sort uh, around to remind employees about their uh, their responsibilities? Uh, and inside to, to remind the employees. Yes. Um, well, there's there's basically stickers that we have. It says 100% ID check. Um, we actually have another. It's electronic calendar, if that makes sense. Um, it has the date on the front of it, even on the back of it. So of course the customer sees it. We even have it in Spanish that we do a hundred ID check because um, we do have some uh, Latino customers as well. Um, so it, they absolutely, every, everybody knows that we have a hundred percent ID policy. Um, it's just unfortunately, um, you know, M Monica just, just didn't do it that day. Okay. Um, the, uh, you're the, the calendar um, that's at the point of sale? It is. Okay. Well, there's actually, there's two. Um, one is uh, one of the little rotary, you know, you just take your finger rotary, almost like a lottery sign, um, which is, um, so if, um, in, the, in, the, in the store area anyway, um, if, if you're looking at the customer, in this case, when this happened, um, the, the sign of the, the date is behind you. This one that we that I'm talking about now, the digital one, is um, fairly recent um, that, that we put in. Um, so where when you're looking at it, you can see the date on the back. It's small, but that's where you make adjustment. But on the front, there's an LED screen on the front, a okay. digital. I have no further questions. The, <clears throat> Brian, the, the layout of your establishment is is a liquor store and then a bar area is that correct that is correct yeah it's a doorway um it's a doorway on the inside um that separates us adjacent to um so you're able to close that door especially during events um uh, you close that door off so people just don't go through um during entertainment um, especially on thursdays we have um a security personnel that stands there at that door so none of this because you know we have to do 100 100 id check so we make them go through the bar door so we always have a guy there especially on the business night which is Thursday Friday and Saturday is not so much well we your your, your yeah. main your main entrance and and exit then is through the bar area is that correct no you can you can exit through the liquor store as well the liquor store has its own entrance it, and, it does and exit so you have you have an employee that that works the liquor store correct mm -hmm. and then I guess depending on an event or whatever you have one or two bartenders, is that? Uh, uh, correct. Um, is that correct? Correct. However, um, during the week, um, during the week, obviously it's not that busy. So that door stays open. Um, Cause like I said, we do serve food. Um, 
uh, we have a basically a full service kitchen, um, so we're constantly rolling through with food, so that door stays open. And later on in the evening, we'll close that door, just because of the fact that the exhaust fan, it pulls things out or whatever. But yeah, so there's different points of exits and entries um, into the establishment. Okay, my next question is, how many employees do you have? Well, um, with or without security. I'm sorry? With or without security. With or without? Yeah, because they're they're just because they're 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 separate. I don't want to say identity, but at, at the end of the day, we have um, eight. Eight that are actually serving alcohol. Oh no 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 no! I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I thought you meant as a whole in a business. Uh huh. Yeah. So, but as, as a whole, you have eight, correct? Right. Is that what? Are, what are your hours of operation? So. Um, right now, uh, it's 10, on Saturday and Sunday, we open at 7, and then we close at uh, 2. Um, all the other days, we open up, well, basically Sunday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it's 10 to 12. Thursday and Friday is 10 to 2. Okay. We open up early on the weekends because we serve breakfast. Okay, and then you have, as you said, Eight employees at any one time? Uh, well, and like I said, it's, it depends on, well, no, we, we never have eight on at all at one time. We don't. Um, so let's, for, for example, on Thursday, Thursday we'll have um, two bartenders, three security, one kitchen staff, and the kitchen staff, uh, he knocks off around 10. Okay. And then we'll, um, right now we don't have a liquor store, uh, store clerk on, on Thursdays um, due to the fact that we're, we're short staffed. But we do have a security personnel standing at that, uh, that door that's adjacent to the store so people cannot come through that door. They have to come back through the bar side. Okay, is the liquor store closed then? No, it's not. It's not closed. Um, what we do is so. How do you, how do you sell? How do you sell alcohol? So basically. Um, Basically, what we do is um, we we take one bartender, which is normally Monica, um, and she would be the the point. And then, of course, I'm there as well. So I'm constantly moving. So I'm watching over in the bar, watching the store. So I'm basically doing multiple tasking. Mm -hmm. But but she's the main one that um, she'll watch the store. Mm -hmm. um, but however. That's not all, all, that's not the case on Thursdays at all the time, but because there are times that we do have a liquor store clerks that, that is available. It's just that they're not available all the time. Mm -hmm. So where's the point of sale? I'm getting this view of, yeah, I'm... of, of, of your short staff, you have a liquor store. I've never been in your establishment, so please, please bear, understand. bear with me. And then you have a bar. So if Monica's at the bar, am I going into the liquor store and grabbing a bottle of, you know, old granddad and then bringing it to the bar and, and purchasing it? I don't, I don't understand. No, 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 no. no she'll, she'll walk over. She'll walk over and make the sale in the store. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't clarify that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that leaves the bar unattended. Correct? No, because there would be a bartender there. Um, on, well, on that particular day, the one that I was giving an example for. But however, uh, everything, there's a big glass, um, there's a big glass pane window that separates the store. And so it's not like you, you don't have any sight of, of either one. You have sight of everything. Because there's, so when we, when I bought the place in 2006, um, that there was, the door was actually behind the bar. So when you walked in the store, you had to go behind the bar, so to speak, and then walk into the bar. You know, and, but you could still walk through the bar. So what we did, we renovated a little bit and, and <coughs> redid that wall. We moved the door closer back towards, say, the soda machine, and we put this great big pane of glass so where you could see. So when you're in the bar, you can see basically the whole, I wouldn't say the entire store, but you can see it pretty, pretty close down to the chip rack. And if you're in the bar uh, store, you can literally see in the bar. Mm -hmm. so, and you can and definitely see the people at the bar, back on the back side over there, and partial over here. You wouldn't be able to see the dance floor unless you're closer to the liquor store door, and then you can look through and you can pretty much see the whole bar. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, it's not like you're blinded, if that makes sense. So you have eye contact on everything, pretty much, 75% of it. 
But you said you had three security guards, so they're uh, on Thursdays. On Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. What about Friday, Saturday? Right. There's only one there at this point. One at that one, one on each. One, one on each. Yep. Uh, just because, just because you know the the, the business is just not there. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, uh, so you know, in those days, you, you know, you really don't say you're, you're understaffed because uh, you have we have kitchen, we have security, we have a store clerk, we we have a bartender. Um, it's just certain days. You know, it's just certain certain days. Uh, and when I say understaffed, I don't mean that as in, um, oh my, God, we don't even have enough people to operate the business. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, um, Monica and I have to fill in sometimes. Like for instance, if a bartender has a, a doctor's appointment, for instance, yesterday um, she had a doctor's appointment, we fill in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, kitchen staff um, needs off, I fill in. I mean that's just the nature of, of the of owning a business. You got to fill in when you can, or or how you can. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we're constantly um, we're constantly placing ads um, for help because at the end of the day, nobody wants to be burned out. Nobody wants to, you know, work six days, you know, um, and and you know work four hours this day or five hours this day and things of that nature. And it just you know people need time off, you know. So we're constantly putting out ads, constantly. And I don't know why people do not want to work. But it would be great to have one more bartender, you know, and one more cook, you know. But it's just, they're far few and in between. And, and if you, um, like I do, I pay attention to a lot of other businesses. And I mean, there's a lot of businesses out there, just like myself, constantly um, putting ads out. We, we need help, we need help. Um, I, I just seen another one yes, uh, the other day. Um, I seen another business straight up the street, you know, looking for, you know, washers and cooks. Cooks are, are the <laughs> toughest ones to get right now. Yeah, you can get a bartender, uh, but you got to be, again, you got to be very careful of what you're hiring. You really do. And I'm very particular to that as well. So, Mr. Atkins, I, I can I can sympathize with you the you know the challenges of, yeah. of getting good staff and employees. Yeah. Um, obviously, our our concern is is with the um, uh, you know verification of age for the sale of alcohol. Um, you know, my concern is is that you know when you when you do tend to get uh, you know short staffed and spread thin. You really need to then look and, and rely on your policies and procedures, and um, you know, and, and things that are in place to help ensure that that you know that there's a licensee that it's not that the underage sale of alcohol is not happening. I, I'm concerned that you don't necessarily have that in place, mm -hmm. and based on on what you've told me, um, other than you know requiring Tam's training, uh, you know that. So, as a as a board member, you know my concern is, is that that your establishment has a high probability of this occurring again, based on what you've explained to me, and that concerns me. So, um, you know what what are you going to? I mean, this has happened once. Um, what are you as an establishment going to do? What are you going to do differently? You know, the employee shortages thing is not going to change anytime in the near future. Um, what are you as an establishment going to do differently to ensure that this does not happen again? Okay, um, to answer your, um, what you were saying, uh, you were saying that uh, a high probability, I, I totally understand that, um, you know, um, the short staff, the short staffing things just was this current um, due to the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, that's when everything for everyone it caused problems. Um, prior to that, there, w there was no issue. But even through COVID, and I understand um, the, um, the the stings and the um, uh, secret um, shoppers, you know, things that weren't, weren't happened. But you know, being in business for 16 years, um, and and we've been um, we've been. I, I don't want to say I don't want to use the word hit, but uh, we've had many of uh, secret shoppers and and visitors. Um, where we we did pass. Um, this is like I said. This is our first violation in 16 years. Um, 
And, and I know I think I've heard some other um, cases here in the last 16 years where they say, yeah, the first time you've ever been caught. But at the end of the day, we know what we do. Um, as far as our business is concerned. We, we know, as far as Monica and I, what, what we do, what we, um, we, we hold our, our people accountable, our employees accountable uh, to a higher standard. I don't, I don't know what other businesses do. Um, and, and maybe that's why we, we don't fail um, as, as most uh, or some other places. But at the end of the day, I can only can, uh, stay in our lane, our zone, and what we do, and, and we, we push this and say it all the time. I've even walked over to employees in, into the store and it's like, make sure you card, make sure you card. Um, and, and it's just a reinsurance saying, make sure, make sure, I'm not saying that they wouldn't, but make sure you do. But, but moving forward, um, again, doing the same things we, we've done um, over the 16 years that made us successful, um, well, myself, successful bar owner, uh, liquor store owner, and is to keep enforcing the, the policies and things that we have in, in place. But um, apparently, what we need to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to make everybody get TAM certified for one. Um, I think everybody that works for me um, can take time away from their previous their the full time job to take RASP because I, I personally myself want to take it as well. Um, and I know Monica does it well. We talk about this stuff all all the time, um, believe it or not. So, well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna put up some bulletins, uh, well, not bulletins, but put some things in place. Um, we're gonna print those things up, and um, we're gonna um, every employee will get a um, basically a I don't want to say a letter, but it's gonna be a letter, pretty much saying this is what this is what we're going to do, and um, it's going to be a hundred. Everybody needs to get TAM certified. Um, we'll look up the, the date when the TAM certification is going to be and, um, and say, hey, look, this is the TAM certification. Everybody needs to be there. I'm paying for it. You have to take it. I'll get with Tammy on the RAS training uh, when, when that'll happen again and say, this is, we, we need to. Now, everybody can't go at the same time, obviously, because we need to run the business. But at least we can get people in there. Um, I remember talking to, uh, I think it was James Stone about the RAS training years ago. Um, and I think even Sergeant Myers too, but um, so yeah. So moving forward, you know, we yeah we're, we're gonna we're gonna make that change and, and put things in place because we, we have to. Because like I said, we we hold ourselves accountable. Because I preach accountability. You know, even outside of the business, I preach accountability. Um, so this is a big deal for us, believe it or not. Even first offense, it's a big deal. I mean, I know she was shook up, and and I was and I was pretty upset about it too. Because we we don't we don't want to be here. I mean, I'd rather talk to you on the street, not not here. Um, that's you know, because um, this is not a good thing, and 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 her and I both know that. And and being in our position, being you know the owner and the owner's wife, it's not a good look at all. And it's and it's not. Uh, and and that, again, that's the thing. People know that we we don't play. They have water thrown at you. People jump in the bar. They want to fight you because you cut them off. We lost, we lose business because we cut people off. You know, we see the talk on social media. You know, it's and because that's what we do. You fight, you're out. You know, you want to disrespect employees, you're out. Don't come back. You know, so that's the mentality that we have when it comes to checking IDs and 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 underage. That, that's not who we are. That that's not who we are. We don't we don't we don't want to serve underage. That's that's fact. And that's why we, we constantly talk about it and push it. Do not card, 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 you know. A um, matter of fact, the, the three security people that I was talking about, uh, um, I'm not gonna mention the company's name because um, he's not a hired contract, um, but I, and he owns a, a security firm. Um, but however, he screens before we hire, you know, as far as that is concerned. He sends me all that information to me so I can do my due diligence. Um, so we, we have great security staff. Um, we, we have a no nonsense policy across the board. That's including with, the, you know, you steal from me, you're out. So why wouldn't it be the same for, for the, you know, if you serve under underage? 
you know, zero. So once, if they know that, if the employees know that, you, if you serve somebody underage, you know, I've heard, you know, I've heard some things, you know, yeah, we're gonna suspend them for this. I mean, we have policies in place where if you're constantly late for work, you get a verbal, then you get a written, and then we just suspended an employee. We're short staff, right? So, but we just, especially, you know, it was a daytime employee. We suspended her three days for continuous being tardy, but we had to fill in. And so we, we have a zero tolerance for, for nonsense and, and underage is, is one of them. Same thing with the tobacco products. We, we, get, we, get, we get that, um, the, you know, the shoppers for that as well. And you mentioned you have a you have a policy. Is that is that doc, policy documented? Do the employees uh, sign well, off on that? I would that? say that, it, that with every hired, how how do you how are you ensuring that your employees understand that that policy what well, the policy is? To be honest with you, again, this is um, so. We were just talking about having all this stuff updated. This was probably about maybe five, six weeks ago. It's been about a month, and I'm not great on time, so it could have been two months ago. We just talked about updating our. Um, our policy and our um, what we call standards because um, everything's changed we have to update all, all that so so we'll get we'll get all that straight and we'll get it to the employees and um, and make them sign make them understand all of it you know what the consequences are if you do serve underage whether it's <clears throat> excuse me tobacco products or alcohol so what is that consequence? I'm confused. Are your, so, your so, so, so it depends on what, if the tardy, so serving underage and being late for work, that's two different, that's two different things. Oh, yeah. So, so the consequence, um, and it's hard, obviously Monica being my wife, so the consequence as far as an employee is concerned, that's, that should be an automatic three day suspension. Um, and with the, with the, with the next one is termination. So where we have in place with, um, um, so, for instance, if you're tardy, if you constantly tardy, you get you get a verbal. If you you know, and then the next one is on on I'm paper. Not, I'm not concerned okay. about that. Okay. Okay. Well, I was just trying to give you the examples. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? No. No. Hmm. Okay. Um, do either one of you have anything you want to say or add? I think uh, Mr. Atkins covered the basis of what situation took place. Okay, thank you. Um, can you verify that there hasn't been a offense in 16 years? You mean three uh, years? No, he said 16 years. Well, she can only go back the, the organization, his business has been in business for 16 years. They've have never had a violation. Can you, can you? Can't verify that. You can't verify that. Well, you're talking about for selling to under No, he said, I've been in business for 16 years, and I've ne we've never had a violation. Didn't specify kind of violation. He said no violations. No, sir. No, you cannot. Okay. As far as verifying? No. That's what... Any violation. Yeah. Well, um, but that's the violation I was referring to, sir. Okay, well... Not, Mr. Chairman. Okay, that's, I just Because that's what we're here today for. So that's, that's what I was referring to. Okay. But, and I, I apologize for that, um, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I, I, I listen and I take things verbatim, so. I understand. Okay, <clears throat> anybody? I'm gonna borrow your agenda. Mm -hmm. Do we have a motion? Agenda, I'll make a motion. I'll make the motion. Um, <clears throat> my apologies. Uh, I'll make a motion uh, based on the uh, facts presented and the testimony uh, received um, for uh, violation uh, Big Dogs Paradise Bar and Liquor for the sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 in violation of 6 TAC 304 of the Alcohol Beverages Article of the Annotated Code of Maryland and 5.04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Uh, might make the motion for a thousand dollars with two hundred fifty dollars held in abeyance um, and a completion of rast training uh, within the next 30 days okay we have a motion we have a second one problem what i'm not having a rast training in the next 30 days <laughs> okay but at the next the next lesson. available rast training okay Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My apologies. 
didn't mean to put you in the in the, <laughs> the bind. We normally don't stipulate that. Right. So I don't know if that works because if Mr. Atkins can't make the next one. Well, here's, may I interrupt her? Okay, so I had put a little note on Susie's note there, Brian, that when we have businesses much like your own where your evening staff, your evening hours are usually your employees or have day jobs, we have accommodated businesses to where they, now that we have a training room, you can come in and we'll train your crew. Okay. So just give us a call and we'll work that out. Thank you. Fantastic. And we also have alcohol awareness training, not TAMs, but right. other trainers who are local who will come to you and work a timeout that works for you and your staff. So I, we can, Susie can get you that info. Oh, that's great, yeah. So we can frame that to be how many days? Uh, what's, what's, how about within, within? Within 90 days is reasonable. Okay. Okay. Within okay. 90 days. So then within 90? Yeah. All right, do I need to amend the motion or just? Yes, yes please amend that. Just say RAS training. All right, just, so the amendment will be the RAS training within 90 days. Thank you. Not 30. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Nope. So the motion fails. So do we have a second? Do we have another motion? Uh, I'll make a motion, being a first time offense, uh, for a fine of $1,000 with $500 held in abeyance, along with the requirement to take the RAS training within the next 90 days. Okay. I got it. I got it. It's a thousand dollars with five hundred in advance. Yeah. yeah. I'll second the motion. Okay, we have a first. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye opposed. <clears throat> okay. Ayes have it. Free. Okay. Um. Yes, sir. Go over there and see Susie. All right. $1, you have 10 days to pay the fine, okay. and regardless, you may within 30 days from today appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. Okay. Good luck. And All right. Merry Christmas. To you, sir. And and rest. Yep. Okay. St. Mary's Landing Steakhouse. Employee, Kayla Brown. The above individual, Kayla Brown, was an employee of a license holder and sold or provided alcohol beverages to an individual under the age of 21 years of age in violation of 6-304 of the alcohol beverage article of the Anacoded Code of Maryland and 5. O4J of the rules and regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Please come forward, be sworn in. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. My name is Kayla Brown and my address is 46885 Morning Dew Lane, apartment 306. Lexington Park, Maryland, 20653. Okay. Thank you. Please, Please have down. a seat. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. So, did this actually occur? Did you yes. Just, okay. Mr. Beaver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> On September 29th, 2022, at approximately 4.50 p.m., St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent a Sheriff's Office Correctional Officer 20 years of age into St. Mary's Landing Steakhouse located at 29935 Three Notch Road in Charlotte Hall, Maryland, with no identification. The correctional Officer entered the premises and sat at a table with Corporal Andrew Holton. Both the Correctional Officer and Corporal Holton were dressed in civilian attire. The correctional officer ordered an alcoholic beverage, specifically an eight ounce uh, mixed drink, Monaco Lime Crush, from a server later identified as Miss Kayla Brown. Miss Brown did not ask the correctional officer for identification for proof of age. Miss Brown proceeded to serve the correctional officer with the alcoholic beverage. Thereafter, Corporal Holton contacted uh, Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers from the Alcohol Enforcement Unit 
who entered the establishment and made contact with Ms. Brown. The officers identified themselves and informed Ms. Brown that she had served an alcoholic beverage <clears throat> to an underage sheriff's office correctional officer. Ms. Brown admitted to not verifying the correctional officer's age prior to service. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ms. Brown was informed by officers that an offense report would be completed and that she would be summoned to appear before this board. Photographs were taken of the beverage and placed into evidence. All this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Questions for the board? Ms. Brown, could you, uh, would you mind describing uh, what happened in your own words? Sure. <clears throat> um, two gentlemen came in and um, I had just came in and started my shift, so they were my first table. Um, I went over there, introduced myself, asked them what they would like to drink. I honestly didn't understand the drink he asked for so I took the menu, went to the bartender, and I told her, I was like, this is what they asked me for. I'm honestly not sure what this is. So she just made me a drink and I brought it over there and I did not ask for any ID. Okay. Did, did you, you, so you didn't understand, understand necessarily what the drink was, but you did at least understand that it was an alcoholic drink? Yes, um, they have new menus. So there's alcoholic beverages on the back, on the bottom, so. He pointed to it, so I didn't. He pointed to it, but I was like, I don't know what a white claw is, so I didn't know what he was asking for. So I told her this is what he pointed to, and that's when she gave me, she told me we didn't have what he asked for, so she gave me a different drink. So that's what I had gave to him. But again, I did not ask for any ID. Okay. Did, uh, what sort of training uh, did you receive uh, with respect to either the menu and its contents or um, verif ID verification? Um, I received no training, only for serving. Okay. So not serving alcohol in food, just the basics of the process of asking for what they would like, their drinks, introducing how to do the um, the POS system to send the orders to the kitchen and running them out. That was it. Okay, so to, to make sure that I'm clear, you're saying you did not receive any training from your employer with respect to serving alcohol? No, sir. Okay, how long have you been employed with the uh, with this I was there for maybe a month or two. That was okay. my second job, so. Have you served, uh, have you waited tables uh, previously? Nope, I'm a gate decorator. Okay, this is your first time waiting tables? Yeah. Okay. Um, but you're, you're pretty familiar with, you know, the need to verif verify age. Um, for the most part, as far as like in the alcohol stores, like in the liquor store, I just turned 21, but I did not consume any alcohol for my birthday when I went out, so. Okay. So, you're, so you're, you're not necessarily familiar with uh, the types of alcoholic beverages. Um, no, sir. And that you, uh, just to clarify, you said there were, the, the menu was changed and there, there were yeah, alcohols so, on one page and non-alcohols on another page? or. Um, so the menu that we had before was just a front and back one piece of paper okay. that had all the drinks. And people that ordered from the bar were regulars that gave us the same order that they always ordered from the bar. But um, he specifically had pointed out one on the, the new menu, so they had bought new menus to try to, I guess, um, try to bring more value to the place because it was very um, unprofessional, the menus were. Mm -hmm. So they got more professional menus from upstairs, which did have items that we didn't sell at the time. So the updated menus had all the drinks on the back and there was an alcoholic section put out from the rest of the drinks. So that's how I was able to tell that he was pointing in the actual, the um, alcoholic section to know that that was what he was asking for. Okay, so so there was at least some delineation that even though you didn't necessarily know what a white claw was, you knew that it was from this side of the menu so that it would at least contained alcohol. Okay, so I guess my question to you is if, it, if you, you know, if at least you knew it contained alcohol, even though you didn't necessarily know what it was, why did you not think that it was necessary to verify this individual's age? Um, 
It wasn't that I didn't think it was necessary. It wasn't in my practice. Normally when they told me, I didn't really want to start serving. I was nervous about it. But when I did start, they just told me to ask them for the drinks. And then if it is something from the bar, go talk to the bartender and she'll either figure out what it is or go and talk to the table herself. Okay. When, when you talked to the bartender, did the bartender ask you, um, hey, did you verify age or anything? No. They just they just presented you the drink and... Yes. She told me that we were out of what he asked for. And I went back and I did ask him. I was like, she told me we're out of this, but if you would like to choose something else, then he just chose something random. And I went and told her that's what it was. Okay. Then that was the drink that I did bring out to him. And she did not ask me if I asked him for an ID. Okay. Um, are you still employed with this uh, current employer? No. No. Were you terminated as a result of uh, this situation? No. The um, I, I'm not sure how the business went about, but I believe it was bought out or sold, or they just stopped doing the whole restaurant and they just had a bar. So it just eventually just ended up getting closed down, and I wasn't making enough money, so I just left the job anyway because it was my second. Okay. Um, do you... Is this something you hope to do again, uh, serve uh, s s wait tables, serve alcohol, that sort of thing? Uh, not necessarily. Um, right now I do currently serve, but it's at IHOP, so there's no alcoholic beverages at all. And I was, I did receive proper training to serve there, so I okay. serve there comfortably. And I know the protocol that they have there, but as far as working at that place, I was really just trying to get a second job to make ends meet. Sure. But that's not really something I have a passion for. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Brown. I have no further questions, sir. Any other questions? How, <clears throat> how long ago did you leave the uh, employee? Um, it's been two months since the violation. <clears throat> Were you there a month? Uh, um, I started like mid-August, and then they sold out in like mid-October. So their last day was the 15th or 16th of October, but I had just stopped coming in around the beginning of October because I was only making like $45 a day and I travel like 45 minutes to go there. So I didn't think it was worth my time going there. When this violation occurred at, at 4.50 in the afternoon, what time had you started your shift that day? I'm not sure of the act, the most accurate time. I want to say it was like 4.30 because I was scheduled to. I'm not scheduled. I was told to come in around 3. Or 3 is the norm because the job I work at is 6 to 2. So the distance it takes from my first job to there is about 30 minutes. And then I need time to change out of my uniform. Mm -hmm. So it's just set at 3. But I did not end up waking up on time. So I made it there around like 4.30ish. So I just got there. Any other questions? <coughs> so when you were hired, were you told that you would be s serving alcohol also and um, to be two card people? No, my uh, my hiring process was um, very unprofessional. I never, I filled out a paper the first time I did apply there. It didn't go through the system. I was not hired. But then they told me they needed help, so I started working there for um, my second job. But I don't know as far as any of my information being sent in or anything like that. And the only type of training I had was the one-on-one -on -one with a server that was there. So they were. So you were not told any particular instructions or protocol to follow as far as a server. No, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No. Can we have a motion? I can make a motion <clears throat> unless you want to, Mr. Cole. Mm -hmm. So I can make a motion unless you want to, Mr. Cole. No, go ahead. Okay, can I borrow your uh, sure. agenda? Okay, um, <clears throat> based on the uh, facts presented and the uh, testimony received, um, for the above individual, Kayla uh, Lavette Brown, uh, for violation of sale of alcohol to underage beverage and then uh, to an individual under the age of 21 years in violation of 6 TAC 304 of the Alcohol Beverages Art 
article of the Annotated Code of Maryland and 5-04J of the Rules and Regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Make a motion for a fine of $50. Okay, we have a motion for $50. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. We have a first, we have a second. Any other discussion? Yeah, so just discussion with the, for the board. Um, uh, I feel like she was set up to fail, um, yeah. which is which is why I'm recommending such a low fine. Um, I definitely sympathize with uh, with that fact. Um, and uh, doesn't sound like this is uh, this is something that she's planning to uh, to endeavor in the future um, but certainly hopefully if uh, she does this will certainly learn serve as enough of a lesson learned that uh, that I don't envision this individual creating another violation um, and hopefully with proper training um, but uh, that's the reason why I made the recommendation for such lower fine um, uh, because I, I do feel like she was basically set up to fail and I agree with uh Mr. Watts's assessment of the situation and the fact that Ms. Brown had no training. Um, it sounded as if it, there was no real structure as to um, um, times that you were supposed to shift and everything else uh, Thing was kind of going on. By word. So uh, that's, I'm in. I'm in Complete agreement with Mr. Watts in his assessment. So we don't, let's, we don't need to explain the reasons why we decide what the fine level is. You well, know, we don't need to justify it. Well, so I, do, I did that for the board, right? Because we're going to next phase is voting, right? And so if uh, I want that to be in your ears as you guys vote as to why I made that. Um, so that was why I explained that um, so that... Uh, Mm -hmm. So we have a first and second. Any further? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. You can go over there and. Uh, Thank you. See Susie. <clears throat> hey, Ms. Brown, good luck. You. you have 10 days to pay the fine, and you may within 30 days from today appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. Good luck, Ms. Brown. The licensee, Kim um, Po So, sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 with violation of 6 304 of the Anacoda <coughs> Beverage Article, of, I mean, of the Alcohol Beverage Article of the Anacoda Code of Maryland and 5.04J, the rules and regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Easy sworn in, sir. Do you hereby declare and affirm under the penalties of perjury that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? The truth. Okay, please state your name and address for the record. My name is Kim Xiao, 23419 Kenner Court, California, Maryland, 20619. Okay, please have a seat. <clears throat> so, sir, did this, this take place? Did she um, sell to an underage person? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Beaver, please read in the uh, facts. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the facts underlying this violation are as follows. On September 29, 2022, at approximately 4.50 p.m., the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit sent the Sheriff's Office Correctional Officer, 20 years of age, into St. Mary's Landing Steakhouse located at 29935 Three Notch Road in Charlotte Hall, Maryland, with no identification. The correctional officer entered the premise and sat at a table with Corporal Andrew Holton, uh, both the correctional officer and Corporal Holton were dressed in civilian attire. The correctional officer ordered an alcoholic beverage, specifically an eight ounce mixed drink, Monaco uh, Lime Crush, from a server later identified as Miss Kayla Brown. Miss Brown did not ask the correction officer for identification for proof of age. Miss Brown proceeded to serve the correction officer with the alcoholic beverage. Thereafter, Corporal Holton contacted Corporal Handy and Deputy Myers of the Alcohol Enforcement Unit who entered the establishment and made contact with Ms. Brown. The officers identified themselves and informed Ms. Brown she had served an alcoholic beverage to an underage sheriff's office, uh, corrections officer. 
Uh, Ms. Brown admitted to not verifying the correction officer's age prior to service. Ms. Brown was informed by the officers that an offense report would be completed and that she and the licensee would be issued summonses to appear before this board. Uh, photographs were taken of the alcoholic beverage by the officers and placed into evidence, and all of this occurred in St. Mary's County, Maryland. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. So, questions? <coughs> Do you want to ask him about? We, we already asked him if it happened. He said yes. Now we read did the. Okay. <laughs> My apologies. I was. Yeah. So now we. Yep. You guys. Yep. No, I got them reversed. Um, Mr. So, yes. did I, am I pronouncing your name yep. correctly? Yes. Okay, Mr. So, you can call me King. Okay, um, can you uh, can you describe your uh, your your training program for new employees? Oh yeah, actually, if we when we uh, hire the new employee, we go and tell everyone you need to check ID. Okay, so that's the first. Yeah, uh, like I say, my. Um, I have a manager, so every time my manager will tell them, if you serve the alcohol, you need to check the ID, 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 <coughs> check ID, check ID, but <laughs> I say, I don't know why. Is, uh, is this policy documented uh, somewhere within your restaurant? And then do employees uh, sign or anything or verification? What verification do you have that your employees uh, have been given this this information from the manager? Uh, well, I don't have that, but Every time we, we go and remind them, you need to check ID. That's okay. Is it, uh, or do you have signage of any sort, you know, posted in like an employee break room or anything to remind employees of this? But we, I have a, I send my employee to training for the, about the legal, the class. Yeah. Did you send Ms. Brown to training? Huh? Did you send Ms. Brown to this training? Uh, no. Because she's a new, so yeah. Okay. And, and also because uh, the restaurant is almost need to close, so at that time we we don't have a time. Okay. So what sort of timeline do you have between when an employee gets hired and when you send them to training? You say when? Yeah. How long? How long? There's uh, I think last couple of months. I think like her mother also have a uh, in the class too the training. Okay. Well, I guess so what I'm uh, what I'm understanding is that that uh, the the server had had been employed with you for approximately a month, but yet hadn't received the training. Um, actually, when the new employee coming, so my manager will tell them saying like, tell them you need to check ID everything, going tell them about the about the law everything okay. was your manager on on uh, on duty that day my manager i think she's not 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 in that that day too and okay. I, I same thing i'm not in the restaurant also yeah okay i understand so um so i understand you were necessarily at the restaurant your manager was in the restaurant but i mean you know, from our perspective as the board, right? You're, as the licensee, you're responsible, yes. right? For making sure that, yeah. you know, that what occurred doesn't occur. Yeah. My concern is, is that I'm not hearing, again, either, you know, policies, procedures, or anything of that nature or training that would prevent this from happening again. So what I'm trying to get to is, is what, policies and procedures do you have in place to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Happen again? Yes, the, the potential for another another person to walk into your establishment under the age of 21, order an alcoholic beverage, and be served that beverage without being having their age verified. Actually, my restaurant already closed. It's yeah, closed. It's closed. Okay. Because well, that'll the situation certainly prevent really from happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can I just uh, ask a follow-up question to that? Yeah. So I understand your business is closed. Hmm. Are you opening up another business, another restaurant, another alcohol-related? Okay. Yeah. He, he he will be going back on his liquor store license with his wife. His, he had a liquor store prior to this. 
Oh, I see. Yeah, that's what he's asking you. Oh, uh, yeah. Are you, are you, will you be involved in any other liquor related business beyond this point? Yeah, come you know. Okay, so you have so you're another. not turning in your licensee. You're, you're going to retain your license. Is that kind of. His work? license is closed for the restaurant. Sure. But his wife has a liquor store. Okay. That he came off of to get to own the restaurant. And right. now that the restaurant's closed, he's going back with his wife on the liquor store license. Is this, is is this, is this next to the restaurant? No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. no, no, no. Separate, separate. 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 Different business. Separate, yeah. right. where, where, is the, where is that located? Is it Clement? And Clements? Yeah. Okay. Also Manderson. Has he already made the application for the? It's an officer change. Okay. Um, okay. So when when did you close the steakhouse? Actually, we uh, we plan to close in uh, October fifteenth. But after October fifteenth. Yeah. So I delay for another two weeks. So we close November. Actually, it's auto end on the October. Yeah. It is. How long did you run that business? The, the restaurant? State, right, St. Le Mary's. Uh, less, less than one, <coughs> excuse me. Less than one year. Less than one year. Okay. Yeah. So it, it physically closed October 15th or November 1st? Uh, what? Hang on, uh, October. 15th and October. End of October. Yeah. End of October. So we have a we have a violation of a business that is now closed, now closed, and a liquor license which is no longer active. Correct. For this business. Understand that. Yes. Right. Okay. So, any other questions? This is just a weird one. Do we have a motion? Uh, I, I'll make a motion. Can I borrow this again? I apologize. I forgot mine today. Uh, based on the uh, facts presented and the testimony received um, for uh, Kim Powell So yes, sir. of St. Mary's Landing Steakhouse, in violation of the sale of alcoholic beverages to a person under the age of 21 in violation of 6 Tac 304 of the alcohol beverage article of the annotated code of Maryland and 5.04J of the rules and regulations of the Alcohol Beverage Board of St. Mary's County. Um, make the motion for a fine of $500. Nothing, no reason to hold anything in abeyance. It is, is defunct, it's no longer a licensee, so we'll just make it an even $500. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second that. We have a first, we have a second. Any other further discussion? Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. See Sue, um, Susie, please. You have 10 days to pay the fine, and you may within 30 days from today appeal the decision to the Circuit Court of St. Mary's County. Okay, we'll move on. New Year's Eve permit approvals. <clears throat> gonna... Sir, if you just want to um, read that for just read the, the board sure. and for the record. So New Year's permits requested for the following establishments as of 12 8 Just read the book. Use the microphone. Oh, Speak your mic was pushed away, sorry. New Year's permits requested for the following establishments as of 12 8 22. OCI Pizza, uh, Pizza King, two, uh, 45413 Lighthouse Road, Piney Point, Maryland, 20670, and Seabreeze Restaurant, 27130 Sandgates Road, Mechanicsville, Maryland, 20659. Special permission to remain open between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. on 1 January 2023 may be granted only to applicants adhering to the following criteria within the stated hours. Holders of licenses, um, licenses authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages for consumption of premise 
on the premise on sale license are eligible for a such a special permit only if such licensees serves prepared food free of charge to the establishment's patrons during the hours for which the special permit is issued and no carry out sales are made during these hours. Holders of licenses authorizing the sale of alcoholic beverages in a sealed container which may not be open nor its contents consumed on the premise off sale license are eligible for such permit. If you remain open without this special permit, you can be fined for being open after hours and your license could be suspended or revoked. Do we have a um, motion to approve? Can we, we'll, we'll just do a, I guess, just a, just a, just a blanket motion. Um, yay or nay on this? Yay. Yay. Yes. Okay. No, need I motion. need a motion. And a okay. second. Okay. But I you make, don't have to do each individual one. <laughs> okay, I make a motion that we approve the New Year's permit for OCI Pizza King in Piney Point and Sea Breeze Restaurant in Mechanicsville for uh, to remain open between two and six AM on January first, twenty twenty three. I'll second that. Okay, the first, second, no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. So we'll move on to the board administrator report. Okay. FY24 budget. Yep, FY24. <clears throat> All right, so I verified with uh, finance and procurement. Um, uh, our last discussion was um, over the supply issues and contract issues of getting a vehicle for the inspector. We almost had one, uh, procurement um, almost had one, but of course the dealer, of course, had a civilian they could contract with and make more money on, so there it went. So it was a thought, it was nice, but it went. Anyways, bottom line is we're pretty sure there's be, I am, from the people who do this have told me that more than likely the contracts usually come out January to March. My concern was would we have a purchase order during FY23 um, because if we didn't then what would I do to ensure that we get this in FY24? I have been assured that since this is a countywide statewide problem that funds would be rolled over to FY23. For. So I don't have to ask for funds again for the vehicle. The funds that were asked in this current budget year will be brought over to the next budget year if needed, okay? Hopefully we'll get the car before then, all right? But other than that, we are not asking for any changes um, in the budget. The, the best page to go to is what this is called, Form SUM, which is the... Uh, Question for you, Tammy? Yes, sir. Didn't we make this request last year? Well, th that's what I'm saying. That request for the car last year, yes. And what I was saying last meeting was we haven't fulfilled that yet because there's, with the supply issues, which is but a But you're line. saying that now they're saying that, that they will roll. If needed. If, if we needed, can't get a contract. Um, my question is what about, we have a need for that vehicle. You can't get blood from a stone. That's all I'm gonna say is you can't get blood from a stone. Everybody's working the hardest to try and get this done. It's not just us. I think Sheriff's Department probably needs some vehicles, you know, that here and there. I'm not worried about anybody else. Understood. I'm worried about But it's, you know, you know, it is what it is, sir. I appreciate that, but it well, is Well, when Kevin breaks down, I always go and get him, so. Yeah, yeah. he guy. does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> it's happened. Mm. <laughs> Let's just say Kevin doesn't take that vehicle uh, when he has to go to Coles Point Tavern or anywhere far, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Uh, we pay his gas at that point. So, um, does Kevin get paid mileage if he has to use his own yes. vehicle? Yes, yes, yes. What's yes. that? How much? Uh, whatever uh, GSA is giving, is. whatever the government is. But it's getting, giving. it's getting up there, right? Yeah, it is, yeah, it is. We, we just reimbursed him not too long ago for Coles Point Tavern. <laughs> 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 um, but other than that, this is basically the summary of the totals, okay? Um, personnel services, I'm, you can see I'm not asking for any more. As far as revenue, I'm, 
I tend to be very conservative in my revenue estimates. Um, you know, we have, uh, as far as COVID goes, we did very good during COVID that we didn't lose any businesses because of COVID. However, we all know that shoe takes a little time to drop. Okay, the businesses that closed during COVID were gonna close anyways because people were retiring and, and just going on, okay? Um, but now with the, as you heard, lack of employees and whatnot, businesses are struggling to make an, to stay open, to be able to stay open long enough to make money to just stay open, period. Um, so I'm a little conservative with my revenue. There is still an upswing, okay, which I think we will reach. Um, as you can see in 2022, um, we usually over, we do over in revenue, <laughs> we spend under what I project for expenses. We never, we never spend out our budget, okay? Um, as far as salaries go, which includes health insurance benefits and whatnot, I leave that the same because that also includes COLA and merit raises, which have to be approved first by the county commissioners. So what happens, this budget will go up there, whatever gets approved by the powers that be, changes for health insurance, premiums, et cetera. Um, finance does a blanket adjustment over everybody's budget for that, okay? And that includes salary for the alcohol enforcement coordinator, which you can see <coughs> I've left at his, uh, what we used last year when he was still a sergeant, okay? It's a lot less now, but he also is entitled, I'm sure, to COLA and, and, and merit, and et cetera, so. You can Help. take it back to that. Huh? Yeah, that ain't happening, to, no. <laughs> Get out. We're gonna have to find a new contract if that goes that way. <laughs> but anyways, um, so I'm not asking for any more money on any office expenses or anything like that. Um, are there any questions? No. No. No, I appreciate you sending this out in advance. Okay. That was good. I mean, all that's missing here is the um, computer program generated data sheets, which are garbage anyways. What, uh, what actions do you need from the board, Tammy? Um, right today, nothing. Today was discussion to see if you had any questions. Next month, I will need you to vote yay or nay on this because the next day I got to run it upstairs. Matter of fact, after the meeting next month, I'll run it upstairs. Okay. Uh, but so no, we vote on it next yes. next month. Yep. So I just wanted you all to kind of see where we're at, um, if there were any questions, um, what revenue gets sent to. Uh, <coughs> when I predict our revenue, it is minus whatever um, Leonard Town takes out in their fees because they get all the fees for the licenses other than 5%. We keep 5% of license revenue for any license that is within the town corporate town limits, including um, one day licenses, okay? My, my question here is in <clears throat> 2022, we had an actual charge and fees of 98,900. And yeah, then well, mm -hmm. the, for 2023. Which we are in now. Right. Okay. We have approved almost ten thousand dollars less. Mm -hmm. Why? Why that? Why? Because that 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 was an estimate I made this time last year, not knowing whether we were going to lose, gain, or remain the same on license revenue. Okay. So I, like I said, I try and be very. You also had the car estimate in there which took money out. So you, I, I try and be conservative because I never know, especially right now with, with we're still coming out of this, we're in a, we're, we have inflation, we have this, we have that. I don't know where the businesses will stand. <clears throat> we're, I actually feel like when I do my estimates, I'm on rockier ground than I was in the midst of COVID, frankly. So, I mean, I'm optimistic, but optimism is not something I put on a, are the businesses struggling that much? When it comes to trying to keep staffing, you did hear from one of your um, violators that you, you get burnout. You can't be there 7-7, 7, 7, 7, 24 7 and there's a lot of businesses that are doing that, and, and you can't, you, especially running a restaurant. Right, right. You have to have a cook. 
you have to have wait staff. You have to have somebody, you know, run in the till. And we've seen some of our restaurants actually cut days and hours. Mm -hmm. our, our liquor stores are cutting hours because actually they're not even having a lot of customers. They, I would say the average that I'm hearing from the liquor stores that talk to me about this, um, they're seeing probably a 30% loss this year. Mm. All right. It was gained during COVID because people were buying up and stocking up because they didn't know if they were going to get their 10 ounce beer. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so they had a little bump during COVID. It made it look like the liquor stores were doing good, but believe me, that, that even mm. So in that, is it, is that 30% loss that they're feeling a 30% off of the off of the high or is it the 30% off of the pre-pandemic revenues? 30% off pre-pandemic. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what's the norm? What's been the average? Say, as far as? Uh, you know, pre-pandemic average, if you will. Oh, you're talking revenue of businesses or myself? The fees in terms of the, the revenue. You're looking at, that's that's about the average. About the average, yeah. okay. Yeah, that's about the average, give or take. I mean, I do foresee us gaining a few licenses, frankly, because just looking at what I've got in my bin now of people coming in and inquiring and starting to do the steps, realize they are many of them in my office six months prior discussing these things and trying to work things out. And you kind of know after a while who's really moving ahead and some people are just kind of trying to feel it out. Mm -hmm. um, so with that information, that's... I'll add them in there. I also have a few in the bin that are waiting to see you, you know, and then there's transfers and, um, you know, we have businesses where the ownership's aging out and passing it on to the younger <coughs> generation. Those are good, that's a swap, you know, but, um, yeah. My only, other qu only question I have is mm -hmm. on the expenditure on the last row. Yes. So I see a big jump from, the 22 to 23, and at 23, it looks like that you maintain the same amount, sustaining that on 24. Right. Well, it's a big jump from, because uh, the line above 35K, that's for the automobile. Right? right. Okay, so what was the big jump between 22 to 23 on that? One? Adjustment in uh, personnel fee fees. Okay. Adjustment in fees. Okay. So that's personnel costs, health insurance, uh, merit cola. Gotcha. Which I don't, when I, when I submit the budget, I don't have those numbers for you. Like I said, we don't control those numbers. That's up to the commissioners mm -hmm. at their. So, so with this inflation, it's not gonna come down anytime soon. I wonder how that's, you think that's, you maintain the 20, 23 going to 24 there as a constant number. Do as far as revenue? or expenditure. we're just going to spend less i mean we're going to get less bang for our buck is the way i see it mm -hmm. okay we're very frugal in our office um mm -hmm. my crew knows that yeah. things are getting a lot more expensive right now <laughs> we so. don't we don't ever ask for uh monies for furnishings and stuff like that what we do is we we inherit furniture from some other uh agencies but also at the end of the year usually around march april if we need big purchases like that, I will look at what we've spent already. I know whether or not we've got court cases or whatever, and I'll realign some funding to pay for training tables or whatever we, a file cabinet or whatever we might need. But we're 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 a cheap date. <laughs> she makes her own disinfectant. I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need I, Peter to pay Paul. I bring my own power tools. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anything else? No, sir. Board inspector, oh wait, pardon me. I'll call enforcement coordinator. Yes, sir, how y'all doing? <laughs> for the uh, alcohol enforcement statistics for November, um, uh, November 23rd, uh, the St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office Alcohol Enforcement Unit conducted a succession of alcohol compliance checks in which we completed 18 visits to various businesses of which 15 were found to be in compliance and three were not found to be in compliance. So that'd be a issue for next month or the month after. So you had three violations? Yes, sir. Um, in reference to the operative priorities for the Sheriff's Office for Highway Safety, the Sheriff's Office arrested uh, eight DUI people 
and MSP had 12. Uh, as far as stationary surveillance, um, I'm certain that you, did Tammy pass this on to you? I don't want to say the names of the places that I did surveillance. Okay. Well, I did three locations basically for uh, shoulder taps, you know, juveniles going up to adults, asking them to go in and buy. So I did <clears throat> a minimum of about 45 minutes at each location, which was three. Uh, one was specific for surveillance uh, that they have a drive through. So there was no violation the time that I was there. However, we continuously get complaints that they are serving. So I'll continue with that action. Um, as far as uh, alcohol postings, we had none for November. Alcohol violations summoned served, we had five. Um, at the public parks or marinas that I visited, Tees Cove, 5th District, 7th District, usually this is, these are the norms that I go to, and Abel's Wharf. And um, training, I had um, online 10 hours of in-service training, and that was mighty fun. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Now you had 12 DUIs? No, state MSP. State had 12? And we had eight. How many do you have? Eight. Eight? <clears throat> so a quick question. You mentioned regarding surveillance that particular location had complaints. Who, who, who were they, who's making the complaints, citizens? Uh, it would be citizens that call into the sheriff's office and then my higher ups contact me in reference to the complaint. And there's many uh, avenues or ways that they can file complaints. So a citizen can go online and do an internet complaint mm -hmm. and a certain um, personnel at the sheriff's office, they view that and they send it to the division commander okay. for dissemination to me. Gotcha. Um, and or it's just straight up a person might come into Tammy and say, hey, you know, this is going on. Okay. Uh, what you going to do about it? So are these related to one particular location, partic particular business? Um, for the specific complaint, yes. Yes, okay. For the others, um, just having knowledge of what was done in the past, um, how... Uh, loitering in certain parking lots, knowing that young people would hang out there, perhaps select a senior person to go in and buy them a six pack and you know pay them ten dollars or whatever the case may be. So that's the part that we're kind of shifting to. Um, and uh, so far we haven't had any of the shoulder taps. We had almost one, but of course the dude recognized uh, Corporal Holton and he took off in mid mid conversation with him <laughs> so uh, we, we didn't count that one but uh, yeah it's, so we're trying to do as much as we can with the resources that we have and as you could tell it's working out tremendously mm -hmm. okay thank you yes sir <clears throat> Ordinance inspector report Mr. Hall Uh, since the last meeting, I did 22 inspections, a couple follow-ups, um, and Tammy and I, the, this past Tuesday, we went to the Licensed Beverage Association meeting at the Rex. We actually got to tour the, tour the new room. It's a big room. It's nice. <laughs> so it lo looks good. Okay. And that's, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for all you do. And sir, even though nobody's here from the Beverage Association, I just wanted to give you a little snippet of, um, they were, we had gone over there, but it was specifically because they were looking into uh, possibly putting in legislation themselves for um, spirit tastings. Because right now in St. Mary's County, the only license, the only permit we have for them is wine and, and beer. Um, so I think we, I don't know if they'll get legislation in this year. They didn't want to do anything without asking the board, so I think the fact that they're not here, maybe they're going to hold off and see what they are able to do via distributors and whatnot, and maybe get a little better education on what other jurisdictions are doing, and then formulate decent legislation to propose and bring before you. So I just wanted to give you that. And um, 
I think they, um, with Community Alcohol Coalition, I know Susie had gone, um, they had uh, MAD there that presented um, a very uh, moving testimony of her, the loss of her daughter yeah. to a drunk driving incident, um, which actually some of the people that were on the penalty matrix um, were very moved and uh, were rethinking their objections to the penalty matrix after hearing this woman's testimony. So I just wanted to uh, let you know that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Board member time. Anybody have anything? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion. I just I have a quick question. So our business establishment required to take RAS pretense training, or is it highly recommended for them to do so? No, uh, it was changed that they, the licensees, when they apply for a license, are required to take RAS. Okay, licensees are required. Yes. Okay. So maybe there's a little confusion between, you know, like the, that gentleman from the, the Mad Dog or? Big Dog. Big, Big dog. dog, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, he seemed to be confused with regards to, you know, the bottom line being not to make sales to minor. It's his responsibility to enforce that. And it's almost sounded as if, hey, if I send um, all my employees to 10 uh, RAS training, they'll get it straight. But that's, that's, not the, that's not the goal, right? The goal of all this training doesn't, not the goal, but the, the training doesn't do anything. You got to implement and force what you learn from the training. And there seem to be a disconnect. So uh, I'm just wondering. Yeah, it's not just training. a box to check. And we do yeah. talk about implementing policies, putting them in writing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, we even tell them exactly. in the training. The disconnect would not be on our part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Let's put right. it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And, yeah. and that was just put in a, in a couple of years ago. So we've only started where the licensee has to come the last that couple of years. So. Uh, yeah. I yeah. mean, they can achieve the same result. That's if exactly. one licensee can take away what needs to be done and establishes the proper policy yes. and enforce that with all their workers, mm -hmm. saying, make sure you got 100% ID check, what have you, and yeah. enforce it day in, day out, then that's that that would be, you know, achieve the same thing. So anyway, just just wanted to. And, and some of them do have come to our class, like, the, the theater, they they actually, before they opened up with their liquor license, they had me come down and look. They had been to the class, yeah. listen to what we said to class, listen to what y'all said at the meeting, and then they had me come down and actually go through the building before they served the first alcohol, so. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now, there, we have people who are in. Something only because you kept talking about TAMS. TAMS is only one of the alcohol awareness trainings. <laughs> gotcha. uh, you. Um, TAMS is only one of them, and TAMS hasn't been in existence for three years. Well, yeah, they've stopped yeah. doing that. Yeah. So he hasn't looked for TAMS. He was talking about going to the Brass Rail, talking about going to St. Mary's Landing. Yeah and all these other things, but they haven't been in existence, so he hasn't looked, right, hasn't right. called us right. to look for a training. Yeah. So. Just part of the reason I wanted to make the motion for my you know, be so high. But. That's another, you know, right. thing that he could have done. <clears throat> but when he calls about the rest, I'll, we'll get him straight. We'll get it yeah, straight. Yeah. I wanted to say to him, but we talked so much that I just, didn't want to add to it. We got so. straight. That's Brian. Though. Yeah. That's the we're way he straight. rolls. Okay. As straight as we can. You know, you can lead the horse to water, right? Yeah. So we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion we adjourn the December 10th alcohol beverage meeting. I'll second that. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>